Hi, I'm Lacey B. Mills, artist and educator in San Antonio, Texas. Welcome to Saturday Morning Discovery. Today I'm going to talk to you about monoprinting. I'm going to give you some examples, I'm going to show you how you can make one, and you're going to be able to make it with stuff that you can find within your house. Mono printing is a form of printmaking. Now in printmaking it's an art process where you have one image that you can print multiple times and each print will almost look exactly the same as the one before. Now particularly in mono printing, which is what I'm going to show you, it's a little more painterly. You'll be able to come up with very unique prints. They're all going to come from the same place, but each one will look very different. This is a snail made from a styrofoam sheet. Then I also have a little sunset with a moose in the front that I made using a glass plate. Now we're going to get into more of the materials that you're going to need. And like I was saying before, hopefully these are all things that you have at home um, so you won't need to even leave your house. Let's have a look at the materials we'll be using today. First you will need a plate or a dish. I bought a clear glass plate from the dollar store. You can also use a baking dish that your mom or dad might have lying around that they wouldn't mind getting dirty. Or you can purchase a sheet of plexiglass from your local uh, home improvement store. Then what I have here is a styrofoam plate. You can buy these in a pack of 50 or more, pretty cheap. Or you can order some online. This is just a sheet of what they call scratch foam. It's much thicker and a lot smoother than your styrofoam plate, but these both will suffice. They'll be just fine. You'll also need some paint. Any kind of acrylic paint will be good. Um, multiple colors, whatever you'd like to use. You'll also need some paint brushes and either a painting roller or an actual roller. Again, you can get this at any type of craft store. You can get these at a dollar store. And then hopefully you have some of these lying around, some washable markers. Any kind of washable markers will be good as long as they're washable. You'll need some scissors and a pencil, and then you'll also need some Q-tips, a bowl of water, and then if you have uh, lying around some spare uh, toilet paper rolls or paper towel rolls, we can use these as well. And then finally, you'll need a sponge. The cleaner, the better. And last, you'll need this specifically is drawing paper that was torn out from a drawing pad. It's much, much more durable and thicker than copy paper, but you can use any paper that you have. I have even have some pulled out um, images and text from discarded magazines. So any paper that you find is totally printable, um, but I will say that drawing paper is probably going to be the best. So I'm going to teach you how to create mono prints using two different methods. First, we're going to start with our plate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paint, shake it up, and I'm going to go ahead and pour it directly onto the plate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my paintbrush to go ahead and paint across the plate. I'm going to get some Q-tips and I'm going to create a pattern. This process is similar to reduction, which means to take away. So what I'm doing is I'm using my Q-tips as almost like an eraser. So I'm just going to go ahead and create some more patterns. And I'm turning the Q-tip around just a little bit so I know I'm actually picking up paint. Once that is done, I will get my paper, place it down, and depending on what type of dish you're using, you wanna make sure you're pressing down and getting into any crevice that there might be, because on this plate I can feel that the bottom part comes up a little, so I'm just making sure I burnish it out. I do so, 
you get this. So that's just with a basic dish or plate, whatever you have handy or whatever is uh, easily purchased. So now I'm gonna try it on plexiglass. Now the cool thing about the plexiglass is it's flat. And you can take an image, like I have this little drawing I did of a snail. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it underneath my plexiglass and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the plate. I'm gonna go ahead and put some paint. I'll do red this time. And now what I'm gonna do is if you have a roller handy or if you purchase a painting roller, you can use that as well. So let me show you. If I put the brush down, as you can see on this print right here, you can see some of the brush strokes. Now, if you don't wanna see the brush strokes, that's when your roller's gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just roll the paint around, get rid of those brush marks, and then I'm gonna get another Q-tip, and now I can trace whatever image I have underneath. And you don't want to move too slowly because again, these are acrylic paints, so they do dry relatively quickly. So let's, oh, he's a happy snail. All right, then you put your paper down and same thing. There's one from Plexi and one from the plate. So here's my little snail that I created using the Plexi glass. So now I'm gonna show you how you can create the same thing but using styrofoam. So when using styrofoam plates to create your mono print, they're gonna come obviously in the plate uh, shape. So what you're gonna need to do is cut them out. And that's exactly what I did with this little snail guy. So once you cut it out, what you're gonna do is you're going to take either a ballpoint pen or your pencil, and you're gonna end up drawing into the styrofoam. That's gonna create a divot or an indentation, and then we're gonna have our ink or our paint, and in this case, the color or pigment from the washable marker sitting on top of the plate. That's why you see kind of like the ghost color here on my little snail. So, Let's get started. Here's my styrofoam plate, and I already have a little piece cut out. So what I'm gonna do is just like the previous one, I'm just gonna create some simple patterns. Once you have your image drawn onto the styrofoam, you can do all kinds of patterns or any imagery that you like. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get markers and you're gonna go ahead and color inside. It's okay if you go over the lines that you just drew. So don't worry if you fill in those um, dented lines. And what's nice about working with the styrofoam is you can cut these into shaped plates. Meaning if I wanted to, I could take my scissors and kind of create jagged uh, edges if I wanted to, to kind of mimic the edges of my pattern. Now once you've colored in your design or image, then you're gonna get your paper, your printing paper, and your bowl of water, and your sponge. Now what we have to do is we have to wet the paper in order to pick up the washable ink. So I'm gonna lay down my plexi, and I'm gonna get my paper and dip 
my sponge into the water. You don't need it to be soaking. You just want to damp, dampen your paper. So you may not be able to see this on camera, but I'm not letting the water pull up on the paper. I'm just making it damp. You don't want your paper soaked. Just keep that in mind. Once you've dampened your paper, you'll put your colored plate down, then press, press your paper. And this process we call burnishing, which means you're just rubbing out the paper onto the plate in a circular motion. And you'll start to see the color come through the paper, which is a good sign. Now you can lift it up periodically to see if you need any more pressure or to pick up any of the leftover marker on the styrofoam. I'm not using too hard of pressure, but you might need to if you're testing it and picking it up periodically. I think that's pretty good. So there's So today, I taught you how to do two types of mono printing. One using plexiglass, if you remember our little snail, and the second using a dish, a baking dish or a plate. This is our pattern. And then our second form was using styrofoam, where we created another little pattern with some really nice complementary colors, as well as our little happy snail. Now again, you can elevate these and make them much more refined, um, spend some more time doing them at home, add much more detail if you like, or you can make them as quickly as we did today. It really is up to you. You can layer images, you can print on found papers or old drawings. Um, it, the opportunities are endless. I hope you enjoyed today's project. Again, I'm Lacey B. Mills and I hope to see you again soon.